Hello. Hello. This is Chris from Chris Loves Crochet and Crochet Recreations. And I was thinking last night about a purse that I used to use a lot and people would always ask, hey, did you make that? And I'd have to say, no, I didn't make that. Um, so I thought I would recreate it because I stopped using it because I didn't want to, you know, I crochet. If I carry around something that's, or wear something that's crocheted, I better have made it. So anyway, so I couldn't find it. So I, I, from memory, I created this purse, recreated this purse with the ruffles on the front and with a button to close it. And um, it's lined, so I'm going to show you guys how to line it. And this is a purse that's, that's made um, with the, some blue striping yarn, and so it's great for jeans. Um, and it's a crossbody, so it's one that you can just throw on and go out to the club or wherever it is that you're going. And uh, if you if you like it, please like. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe below and um, and share the video and do all that good stuff. And let's get started. Okay, so to start this purse, um, you want to find the yarn that you want to use. Probably not something too thick. This is actually a size two from Ice Yarns um, and it's an interesting yarn that I got. It was on sale so I got it. A pack of it. It's called Tube Cotton and it's fine So, and it's a number two weight. Um, it is, it calls for three millimeter uh, uh, knitting needles so I'm going to use a four millimeter hook and um, it's made for 67% cotton, 33% polyamide. So it's a cotton blend. And um, that's what we're gonna start with. So the thing about what, what I'm gonna do with the ruffles is, um, is that we need to keep, always keep an even number of stitches. So when we start with the beginning chain on the bottom of the purse, um, we just need to start even so that way everything stays even so three, four, five, six. so I ended up with um, 32 stitches and I'm going to double crochet in the one two three fourth chain down and that double crochet is going to be Actually, my second stitch because the first, the first three, ch first chain of three is a is a double crochet. So I'm going to continue along down the chain um, to the end, and then I'll show you what I do at the end because we're going to continue going around down the other side. So once we get to the end in the last chain, we're going to put in um, three double crochets. So here we're coming up to the last stitch, the last chain, and we're going to put three double crochets there to turn the corner. So one, two, three. Not really the corner, we're actually turning all the way around to the other side. So that's the last chain. And so now I'm going to do a double crochet along the other side of the chain on the other side of each one of the stitches. So we have the three in this last chain and then here's the here's the last double crochet before we did the three. The last double crochet before we did the three. And so on that side of the chain I'm going to do a double crochet and I'm going to do that all the way down to the bottom. Well to the other side. And then um, as I get to the end, then what I'll do is, since there's already one in there, I'm just going to add two more so that we have three on each end. So this is the second to the last. Chain. And then we have this, um, golly, then we have this uh, three chain, three, this chain three double crochet 
um, that's down here at the end and we need two more. So at the bottom of this um, chain three, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pop in. Oh, I need two strands there. Again, this is interesting yarn. It's not like it'll split because it's like a netting around it. Kind of funny. So I'm gonna do two more here. As I speak, here comes a crunch of knitting. So two more there, and then there. this chain three is already the first one, or the third one. So I'm going to um, go up to the top of the chain, so it's one, two, three, and slip stitch here to close off that round. Okay. Now. As, so this is the beginning of the bottom of the purse. So as we go around, I'm gonna add probably three rows. So as we go around, I'm gonna use the same um, technique as if we were doing a circle, and each time we get to the three at the end, well, this time as we get to the three at the end, each one of the three is gonna get, a, get two double crochet. Then the second round, sorry, then the third round, um, it's going to be one double crochet and then in, in the first one and then two double crochet and then one double crochet and then two double crochet and then one double crochet and then two double crochet and so that that six that three turns into six that turns into nine and that'll give us three rows around and so I think that that's going to be about the width that I'm going to have the bottom of this bag. So I'm going to chain up three and that counts as one double crochet and since we ended we slip stitched here on the um, the third of the three double crochet at this first end I'm going to go ahead and put in two more in the top of this chain where we slip stitched if I can find the hole I'm going to put in two more double crochets I just I just chain three for one I'm going to put in two more double crochet I'm sorry, one more double crochet. So there's two for that. And then when I come back around, then these last two will each get two double crochet. I'm gonna put one double crochet all the way down here to this end. When I get to the three that are all together in this last stitch, each one of those three are gonna get two double crochet. And then each one of those six, I'm gonna have one double crochet, then two double crochet, then one, then two, then one, then two. Okay, and so I'll meet you back after I do that. All right, so I've reached around the end of the third go around and I'm gonna slip stitch here at the top of the chain three, the first double crochet. And this is as big as the bottom of my purse is gonna be. So most, so my purse is just gonna be a little a little thing to hold a wallet and a phone um, and then I don't know what I'm gonna do with the with the handles yet I don't know if I'm gonna have it be a um, a, a strap that's gonna go across a crossbody strap or if I'm just gonna put on some little wooden something or other but this is the bottom so it's gonna go like that it's gonna flip over um, and I ended up putting in some some uh, stitch markers just to make sure I didn't pass by where the um, where the uh, rounded corners were, where the rounded ends were, so that I got my double crochets and then my single and then double, not single, and then my one double crochet and two double crochets in where they needed to be. So here we have this, <coughs> excuse me. So um, now I'm gonna start building up the purse. So I'm gonna start building up the bag by um, with, with um, half double crochets. And what I'm gonna do is do two rounds going just the same direction and then I'm going to turn directions and go back and I'll show you. And then I'll show you why um, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna chain up two and that's gonna count as a half double in that stitch. And then I'm gonna do a half double in the next stitch. And then I'm no more increasing on the corners so that way I'm gonna start, it's gonna start building up. So um, just do two rounds of half doubles 
going the same direction. We're just doing rounds. Do two rounds going the same direction and then change directions and do one kind of backwards. And I'll show you why. And I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I finished up and I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see why we did um, the last round of the um, half double um, going the other direction. We turned and we went the other direction. And so we were looking at the inside of the bag as we, as we finished up. So then I just did my slip stitch and now I'm going to chain three. And turn again so now I'm looking at the outside of the bag so I'm on the right side of the bag now if we look at the anatomy of a, a um, half double crochet you can see that on the top I'm gonna get too close now that we've zoomed in on the top you have these V's but the the half double crochet on the back has this extra bar it's the back bar and we're going to be using that back bar Let's see if I can get that so here's the back bar and then here's the front of the stitch or the top of the stitch that has the whole V there's the whole V and then below that whole V is that back bar and we want it to be on the outside of the purse because that's where we're going to put the ruffle and we're going to put the ruffle in that back bar which now is the front bar because we did it um, from the wrong side so I've already started my three double crochet with my, my chain of my chain three so I'm going to do two more double crochets in the back bar of this first double or half double crochet so I'm going to go into that bar not that stitch up there I'm going to come back around and, and stitch in that stitch so there's one double crochet and two double crochet add that to that chain three and that's three double crochet I am only gonna skip one stitch and go into the next back bar and do three double crochet I know that's not equivalent to the number of stitches that we're going through but that's because we want it to be a ruffle so we've got three and then I'm gonna skip this next one next stitch go to the next stitch into the back bar and do three double crochet not half doubles we're doing double crochet for these ruffles that way they overlap a little bit so I'm gonna do that all the way around and come back okay. okay so I made it all the way back around with the three double crochet in every other back bar and I did a slip stitch into the first um, chain three that we had now the funny thing about this is I really like the back side of the um, double crochet I think it looks a little bit more lacy that's the part you see our little boat so far it's not quite a bag we have a boat that's the part that's going to be um, our ruffle on the outside is the back side of that double crochet that we just went around and did the double crochets it's going to lay down because we did it in that back bar <coughs> excuse me and we're going to continue another round now of um, double crochet or half double crochet um, on the wrong side so what we've done is we all I've done so far is just um, slip stitched in now I need to chain three turn because we're going to be on the wrong side again and do a slip stitch up here because this is going to lay down the ruffle is going to lay down one direction and our half double crochet is going to continue going up so that's kind of it's kind of strange so just just bear with me here so here on the uh, first chain three of the double crochet round um, at the at the base of that 
I'm going to do a slip stitch after my chain three so that I don't pull that ruffle up. So the ruffle will lay down on our little bag. It's still going to lay down. So I've just done that slip stitch. Now I need to do a chain two for a half double. Now that chain two counts as that half double in that first stitch. So now I'm going to go to the next stitch, which is where I have the first uh, back bar trio of double crochets here. So if I fold that down and I'm looking on the inside of the purse, I can see where that whole stitch, that whole V for the, for, from that previous half double is still there. So I go in, pull up a stitch, yarn over and pull through the three loops on my hook. That's my first real double crochet half double crochet. I'm so sorry. So now on the next stitch, we have this laying down. We're folding down that ruffle. I have this next stitch. It's right there. It's going to be a yarn over, put my hook through, grab my yarn, pull it back, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on my hook. It's another half double crochet. I'm just going to continue half double crocheting as if that that flap of ruffle wasn't even there because it's laying down and we're continuing to move up up on the purse so and this whole stitch is still there because I put the ruffle in the back bar each one has two each round has two rows of stitches so I'm probably going to do at like like five or six or seven of them I don't know I'll let you know like five or six or seven of them. And then I'll have um, an area where I'll show you where I'm just gonna do just half double crochet. And uh, so we have a place to put a button or something. Something for our purse. But let's see, we'll go back in. This is our purse, our little boat. It's about the size of a, Right now, we couldn't even put a half a phone in there, but at least it's the it's a it's a width of one, right? So we have the bottom of the bag, and we have the sides of the boat come boat coming up, and we'll have room for a wallet and a and some lipstick and a uh, phone in there, and we'll be doing good. So I'll be back. Okay, so here's the five rows that I did of the ruffles on the bag. And um, as I was doing it, I thought, you know what else would be really pretty is to do, instead of the double crochets, is to do trebles, and then you have even more rufflies. Um, but this is with doubles, and so they're just little short ruffles, so you can see there. And so now I'm done working on the wrong side with the, with the half doubles. Um, and you can see over on this side, yes, that we have little... Um, chains that are coming up in order to not pull on the, on the ruffle was the best way I could think of it. If you think of something better, put it in the comments. Let me know if there's something better to do it. But I don't, I don't mind that look. Um, this side's all nice and smooth. This side has some, a little bit of character. So what I'm going to do now um, that I finished the last row of ruffles, instead of turning and doing the wrong side of that half double crochet. I'm going to start doing straight double crochet around just on the right side. And um, what I'm going to do is is probably about five rows, but the last three rows, so to do two rows of, of straight double crochet and then um, three rows of decrease like we did on the bottom. Um, decrease just on the on the sides. And so the, the purse, where there's stuff in it, this will flatten out on the bottom. And the, the purse will come up a little bit further and then come in just a little bit. And then we'll have a, a flap with a, with a button is what I'm thinking um, for that. 
Also, I don't like to line purses. I'm not really a person that does that. I have this little, what they call a kangaroo pouch that, that fits in. I have a couple of different sizes. It fits into different purses and I just pull out all my junk and put it into the next purse. But this is going to stretch a lot. This is the yarn that I'm using is very stretchy. And so I'm going to be looking around for um, a piece of material to to line it so that uh, so that the, the purse itself does not stretch out, so it holds its shape. Um, so just a little thought there. So I'm going to continue on, go on the right side with, so these flaps are going down, so I just slip stitched. So now since I'm doing double crochets, I'm going to chain up three. And that's the first double crochet in the slip stitch. And then in the next um, half double stitch that's available, I'm going to go in and make a double crochet. And do double crochet, just checking the screen, uh, all the way around um, twice without any decreases. And then I'll do some decreases just opposite of what we did for the increases on the bottom of the purse for the top of the purse. Oops. This is kind of slippery yarn too. It's interesting yarn, like I said. It was on sale at ICE. So I thought, oh, tube cotton, that sounds fun. It is fun. And I thought this, you know, like I said before, this is great color for like wearing with jeans, using with jeans. So I'm just gonna go around and do, um, do two rows of straight double crochet and then three rows of some uh, decreases around the edges. So the front will stay will stay pretty sturdy and then or straight and the sides are just going to come in a little bit not that much probably that much um, in order to have the top of just a little clutch now you can make this as, as large as you want you start with your your first chain longer than just the 30 um, 30 chains or 32 32 chains when you count the the first double crochet and chains um, you can make it longer you can make it 40 um, you can certainly make these make more than five rows of of ruffles. You can make the ruffles as as trebles as you go up um, and make a, a more of a big full size bag uh, and use um, a straight cotton instead of this this cotton this cotton uh, blend with the polyamide. I guess the polyamide is something that's stretchy, isn't that a kind of nylon? So it got it kind of stretchy. Um, and so that it would be a little bit more sturdy, or you can make it with this same same yarn from Ice if you want. Like I said, it is cotton tube fine, and it's got some pretty colors. Uh, it was on clearance though, so I don't know how much is still out there, um, and and a really good price. That's why I got it. I got this whole bag, I got eight of them, and I'm still on my first one. This is really lasting a long time, so I'll probably use a total of two out of these eight. And then I think with the rest of them, I'll make something wearable, like maybe a little vest or something, um, so that the, the stretchiness works for me instead of, you know, not really against me, but it's not something that you're really looking in, looking for in fabric for, or in yarn for um, fabric for a purse. Anyway, that's where I am, and I'll keep going. Okay. So I found some fabric in order to um, line... The purse, I know it's white. I couldn't find any blue or even beige. I found black, but that would make the purse all dark inside. Anyway, um, and hard for you to see what I'm doing. So what I did was I took this fabric, found the crease. It was already folded right here, so it's folded. That's going to be the bottom of the purse. And you just lay it out. It does, this is not rocket science. I am not a seamstress. You put the purse down to where you kind of lay it flat so that the bottom is at that, um, that crease, at that fold. And over to the side with a little bit, maybe like a half an inch 
left over over on this side and like maybe a half an inch left over on this side. Get some nice sharp fabric scissors. Why am I doing this upside down? I don't know. Um, give it a little snip there. And then up here at the top, um, we're going to fold it just a little bit as we sew it. I don't have a sewing machine or an iron. Is that ridiculous? Anyway, so uh, we're just going to fold it. Or I'm just going to roll it down a little bit and sew it as I go along. So I just want a little bit more than to the top of the, of the bag here. So I'm just going to measure to that and give it a little bit more. And that's... Those are my markings for how I am going to cut this. You may have noticed um, I put a, a single crochet uh, round on the top here of just some regular acrylic that doesn't stretch quite as much as this as this cotton does, just so that I have something that's not quite as stretchy to attach the lining to. That's just because of the yarn that I used. It's certainly not required to do. But it's just a nice navy that goes along with the with the blue striping yarn. So now I'm going to cut this out. And like I said, not rocket science. You make a, a mistake doing this. Um, better to err on the side of too big than of on the side of too small. And so anyway. I'm cutting across oh I just went a little bigger so that's that's okay all right so that's that's not even a straight line <laughs> And now I'm going to go, I'm going to cut down to where I made the little snip down here. I'm cutting two, the both sides at once. So I'm, I'm cutting the rectangle with, with the fold in it already. There we go. There's our lining. Easy peasy. There's our lining. It's got something on it. Um, but this is the, uh, so if you have a decorated piece of fabric, make sure that what you're looking at is the, is the backside. Because when you open up your purse, this is what you're going to see is on the inside. And so if you have some sort of decoration, hey, shh. If you have some sort of decoration, you want it to be seen when you open up your purse. So make sure that this is the back side of the fabric if there is a back side. This is the back side. So the first thing that we want to do, and since we cut it on the fold, we don't have to sew anything on the bottom because obviously it's already attached. So what I'm going to do is just sew up um, each each side, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in about a half an inch and just sew straight up, just straight stitches. I've put, I've already, I didn't want to do this on camera and you can't see it because it's white thread, but I've already threaded my regular um, needle and uh, put a knot on the end. And so I'm just going to go in about a half an inch and I'm just going to sew up the sides. And it's, it's not, I'm not making a, a dress or anything like that. So I may go back, okay, I'm going to do a back stitch just so it doesn't like pucker up or something. I don't even know. But this is, I've done these, I've done several of these and, and this works. So this is how I do it. So I'm going to um, do this on both sides and then I'll show you how I attach it actually as a liner inside of the bag. So here's my beautiful lining <laughs> that I'm going to put in the purse. Now, before I put it down in there, I want to show you that this top part, so I, I, I sewed it just really simply on the edges here. And that's what's going to be, this is the outside of it that's going to be um, inside facing the purse so it's completely hidden so it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be cut exactly straight 
it's just it's just completely hidden so um, and we can see that I've got quite a bit of length up here so I'm going to fold down this top part because I'm not going to seam the top because as we established I don't even have a sewing machine much less know how to use one so we're going to fold this down till we have about the right height just a little bit shorter than the purse itself so now you just take this lining and you squoosh it down in there and I've got ends that are still in there that I don't even have to I, I need to make sure that they're secure but I don't have to really hide them and make them all nice and beautiful because they're being covered up by a lining so it's not a positive for having aligning in your purse so we're pushing that down into the purse and so yes it's a white lining but um, hey it kind of you know if you can see it then it kind of sets off sets off some of the blue maybe look at the positive side okay so I think that's about right Make sure that it goes all the way down to the bottom in the corners. And you don't need to unfold it, maybe just a little bit more so that it, you can utilize the full length of the purse. And now you just start stitching this on. Um, in order to keep it somewhat orderly, I'm going to use some pins and pin it in place in a couple of places like four places like right here and right here and right here especially because at the top it's a little bit smaller so we're gonna have to kind of um, squoosh it up as we or you know stretch out the top as we as we sew so that um, it is uh, it's even all the way around so I have the edge over to the edge here I'm gonna pin that so we make sure that the edge is at the edge this side I don't have to pin because this is where I'm gonna start so I'm gonna start with this edge at this edge and we don't want to be all the way up to the top. What we're going to be doing is sewing it to the last, to the bottom part of this last stitch. So I put in this dark gray, dark blue, sorry, this navy blue, and the bottom of that single crochet is right there. And we don't want to stitch all the way out, especially because I'm using white thread. Now, if you wanted to use a navy thread, you could. You could stitch all the way out. I'm just going to stitch to connect to the part of the stitch that's on the inside of the purse. So I've already threaded my needle again off camera and put a knot in the end. And I have it double thickness because, you know, you work with yarn and thread looks so thin. Anyway, so um, I have it doubled and I'm just going to use a little whip stitch. Whip stitch? No. No. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so I'm going to go in from the back so that the knot is hidden in between the, um, the liner and the purse. So that goes down in there. And then I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to use a whip stitch. That way I make sure that I keep it below. I'm just going to go around this stitch, the bottom part of that single crochet, and then into the liner. And then go into some more thread and go into the liner. So there's no thread showing through this side. And you can see that there's a little bit of a whip stitch start, starting here. And we're just going to keep going. And hopefully our little pinned places will keep us, keep us in line. They don't have to be perfect stitches. 
So here we have a little bit of a buckle, a little bit extra. So make sure that you're stretching out your crochet and um, getting that fabric evenly across the purse. All right, so through that thread and through here. So I'm not gonna torture you with my fabulous, fabulous sewing ability. I'll come back in a second. So there you go, I finished the lining. It's not beautiful, but it, you know, the way that you do it, it hides a lot of imperfections and it's just gonna be filled with things. So um, what I've decided to do is just do a little flap and then find a pretty button for it. So instead of making a separate flap, what I've decided is to um, just find the center. Let's see, this is gonna be the back because the seam seems to be a little bit further back here. So I'm gonna flip it over this way. And this will be the front. So on the back is where I'm gonna attach the, um, the little flap that I'm gonna put over. It's only gonna be about six stitches wide and just come over and then I'm gonna have a little chain that's gonna go around a button that, that hopefully I have a cute button. So if I measure this opening here, it's eight inches. It's eight inches. So it, the center of that is four inches. So I'm gonna find where four inches is right here. And I'm gonna go down a couple of stitches and then go over three because I wanna have six. So one, two, three stitches. I'm gonna put my hook right in here. So because I don't wanna sew it on later because I'm a lazy crocheter. Well, I'm an efficient crocheter, I should say. Um, I like to attach as I go. So, put my little slip stitch on there. And what I'm gonna do is single crochet top stitch. Well, first I'm gonna do a chain one. And then I'm gonna single crochet a top stitch across six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see right there, I just started my tab that's gonna go over the top, the little flap tab that's gonna go over the top and then and button. So I'm gonna chain one and turn and then I'm, I'm gonna do half double crochets from here on and I'm probably gonna do about three inches because we just want it to come over just barely over the top, um, maybe four inches to give it a little bit of room and then um, the button's gonna be right here before we get to the ruffles. So I need to find a button and see how big it is. And then at the end, at the bottom of the, that little tab flap, I'm gonna have a loop of chains that's gonna go around the button. And then I'm gonna do a uh, crossbody um, uh, strap. And I think what I'm gonna do is do uh, two strands of this and one strand of this um, navy acrylic and just do a big chain. Um, that way I have this purse yarn that's part of it, but also this acrylic that doesn't stretch as much so that I can make a, uh, a chain and have it be a crossbody bag to uh, just take out on the town at night. So I'll show you the, I'll show you the finished product once I find my little button and I do the, um, the strap. All right, so there it is. I went ahead and found a button that went along with, went with the, um, the white uh, liner that I did. So I put a white button on there so that it looks like it was on purpose. So here's the little loop, the little tab 
that I sewed on here comes around here and then you just the button it. So I put a chain there and then I just did um, like I said I was gonna do two strands of the of the color of the of the purse and then one strand of the acrylic so it wouldn't stretch quite as much and I did about 45 inches about so I just put the the tape measure across my body and it was about 46 inches so actually I did about 44 inches um, for where I wanted it to be because it is going to stretch some probably even more than that and you know sometimes I'm from the 80s sometimes at the top of your purses you put a little knot so that it's at the right height length for you so um, I also added to the side where I just sewed this on there was instead of having to hide the tails I just added more tails so that there's fringe here on the sides because that's what I do that's how I roll man is with fringe so here is my little purse to carry around when I'm wearing jeans going here and there and I kind of like it I hope you did too so hope you enjoyed that um, that recreation of the purse that I lost so um, we always have a choice so please choose happy and I will see you soon.